year that almost broke me. Mm. <laughs> and um, was, um, but I also think it was the year we had one of the best shows ever. Paco. Amazing. Amazing. Again, when I watched the video later, I was happy. When 2011, when we had Q-Tip, um, I guess Q-Tip has, has a reputation of being, some people call him difficult. I actually don't find it terribly difficult. I think he's just a perfectionist in a world of half asses. He is a perfectionist in everything in every, and he's also extremely detail-oriented, mm -hmm. which in a way that many artists are not. Tip don't play no games from every single detail. And they call me, Ebony will say the same thing to me, call me perfectionist, like, yo, just let it go, which I always wonder, like, so if, if I, what's the, if you don't want me to be a perfectionist, what do you want to be, like a, eh, is like a mediocreist? Like, doesn't everybody want to be, have they, have they stuff or point. And so when something small was wrong, I heard about it. Mm. And I had to fix it or nothing was moving forward. So anyway, dealing with Tip was did have his challenges. Um, but I love him for it because of it was all to deliver a superior product. But that morning when we were doing sound check, he's going over every detail. He's going through I'm talking about every speaker, every monitor, every mic. He's damn near checking the RCA plugs on the turntable because he's going to be represented right. And um, his boy, his, one of his road managers, Lytro, uh, who's been with him since, uh, seemingly for 20 years. And Lytro comes up to me. We're like, doors are opening in like 45 minutes. And, and Lytro comes and goes like, yo, he wants to talk to you. And I'm like, ah, oh, jeez. Now me, I'm just like a little hip hop nerd who's idolized Tip since I was in high school. So I, I'm almost a little nervous. So I come over there and, and Lytro goes like, yo, this is Wes, this is his, like, this is his joint. And he goes, okay, yo. And, and I have talked to him, a couple, you know, we had had our meetings or whatever, but he's just like, yo, come, come with me. And he just grabs me and he takes me on one side of the, of the venue and he goes, listen to that. And then we walk to the other side of the venue. And he goes, listen to that. And he takes me to the way back of the venue. He says, listen to that. He's like, you know what I'm talking about? And I'm like, yo, dogs, I don't know. Like, I'm looking at myself like, what is he, what is he talking about? And then he goes back to, the, to his sound engineer and he goes like, see, he agrees with me. We need like 16 more speakers. We need eight over there and eight over there. And he said he was gonna pay for them. Going through it, it was, it was, it was one of the hardest mm. shows I've ever produced. Um, what? You know. And he's and he goes through this whole rather detailed sound, you know, analysis of the venue, and he had found dead spots. He had basically done the acoustical analysis of the place that morning, and I'm just like, yo, this dude is like, you know, at that that point, I'm like, yo, he's crazy, mm -hmm. and, I, and I was like, I don't, I, and I'm freaking out, like, is he not going to perform if I don't get sick? But at this point, you can't get those speakers. They would have cost me like twenty thousand dollars to get him. It was just impossible. But he says that to Maynard was his man. And he goes to Maynard. He goes like, so he goes, Wes, go work it out with Maynard. And he just goes off. And I look at Maynard. And he goes, don't worry about it. Like, like you know, don't worry about it. I'll talk to him. We'll move these things around. And I was like, are you sure? He was like, this is just what he does. Like he's just going through the motions. And meanwhile. Lytro has been watching the whole thing for the like the past 20 minutes and I look and I'm like and I look and he breaks out laughing like ah like oh he did it to you you know so it was it was one of those things where you just freak out <laughs>